Hello and welcome back to Growler Wall Painting. Um, today we've got a, a, oh, another Ogre Painting video. So this is a Iron Grub and this was a request video for a paint tutorial. Um, so with this video I'm going to focus on how to paint the armour, uh, the weapons, the pants, the clothes, stuff like that. I'm not going to focus on the skin for this tutorial. Uh, if you want to know how to paint the, the skin of the Ogre, we've got another Ogre Painting video which there will be a link in the description. So go and check that out. Uh, this is mainly focusing on all this cool armor and stuff we've got on this character. Okay, so first stage, let's focus on the armor first. Uh, we're going to use multiple colors for the armor. All the paints we're using are in the description and the equivalents in the old paints, new paints, they're all there. So don't worry about if I'm going for, not going for the paints, they're all in the description. We're going to use bulk of metal on the armor, uh, lead belts and the new paints. And we're going to do some parts of the armor brass. The brass parts, tin bits is good. Uh, like I said, equivalents in the new paint will be in the description. First, we're going to start with the bolt gun. So, take, um, you can use any size dry brush, but I like to use a small one just because it's more accurate. Um, take a bit of the bolt gun paint and just rub most of it off onto a tile or palette or a bit of tissue, whatever you're using. So, just rub most of that paint off and then you can start applying it on the armor so just lightly brush that over all these sections and I'm going to apply this really quite heavily because we're going to wash it so if you apply it heavily now and then wash it later it gives a really nice effect so we're going to do this all over the armor and it's going to prepare it for the next stages so really quite nice and heavy on there for the wash going on Use a bigger dry brush. Um, I might upgrade the size of the brush because it's quite a large model of this. So. Uh, I'll be back in a second when this is completely finished. Okay, so uh, I actually upgraded with a really large dry brush there, and I just give it a really um, basic dry brush all over the metal parts. Doesn't matter if you make a mess of everything else because it's the first coat. So now um, we're going to apply some black wash, so bad at black or null no oil. Um, and we're going to use a wash brush for this, a uh, really nice size wash brush. Make sure the brush is wet when you're applying the, the wash, and um, it'll just go on a lot better. And then we're going to let this dry and work on the pants. So let's get this, um, let's get this wash on. So load your brush right up, don't be scared, but too, you can never use too much. Um, so let's just, you don't have to be um, fancy, just get it on the, all them metal areas and it'll give a really nice effect. We'll work back into the armour um, in, in upcoming steps because this bit here needs to be red um, and we'll do some brassy bits, we'll get some nice effects on the armour. Um, Okay, so now uh, we're just waiting for this to dry, we can move on to some of our sections. Uh, I'm going to use my fist and red on the pants uh, to start off with. So you might want to do green pants, you might want to do blue, it's up to you. Uh, on the other video, the other video I've got, the link's in the description, we'll do green. So um, we'll get a nice little bit of variety here. So with fist and red base coat, and I'm going to use a base coat and brush, and all I want to do is just with a little bit of water on the paint, just apply this all over the pants. We'll need two coats. Well, that I'll put on too thin and too thick. Don't want to lose any detail. Uh, this really looks quite nice on all guys. Complements all the, the darker tones and skin tones. So I'm just gonna base coat all the cloth areas. I'm gonna leave the belt. The belt will be made out of brown leather, something like that. Ok 
Okay, so let's work back into the armor now the wash is dry. Um, if you want a dark, grungy armor, I'd recommend using bolt gun again with a nice big dry brush like this. Give a nice grungy highlight. But I'm gonna actually go for a bit of a lighter armor, so I'm gonna use chain mail um, in the in the same kind of method with a dry brush. This will give a really nice kind of bright gleam on the armor. Um, it's just a highlight. So we'll rub most of it off the brush as usual with a dry brush. Um, be really careful with it because it's obviously a, a, quite a light colour going over a dark one. If you're using bold gun, you don't have to be as careful. So just really lightly brush it over the, the main areas of the armour. Obviously trying to avoid getting it on your red pants. And this will just give the armour a really nice gleam to it. Um, just see the difference there, that's highlighted section here. And then there's the darker section there, so you can see the kind of effect it gives. Um, might give it some edge highlighting, just to finish the model off at the end, but this is a really nice, quick, effective way to highlight. Uh, if you haven't got a steady hand, this is a brilliant way to do it. It takes no actual attention to detail, all you have to do is just make sure you don't overdo it. Just cover all that. Um, might actually bring out some of these armour sections with some brass colours, so we'll do that next. Okay, so let's work on his right arm here. So uh, we need to make it look like it's covered from dried blood or something like that. So start off with dark flesh. Uh, it might seem strange because it's brown, but it creates a really nice base for you to do the dried blood over the top. So I'm just going to use a base coat brush again. I'm going to use some plenty of water to get it nice and flowy. So let's base coat this arm dark flesh. This dries really nice, dark, horrible, murky colour, which creates a nice foundation for doing the dry blood. So it's just the right arm of the move, I think. Um, and it's on the arm and on the skin. Okay, so now that we've base coated that, we're waiting for it to dry. Let's make the armor a little bit more interesting, and we'll introduce some brassy kind of color bits. So, to start. We're going to use tin bits. Um, we're going to use a base coat and brush. I'm just going to pick out little sections of the armor that would look good being a brass color. So, on the belly plate here, there's some nice little sections uh, that you could that you could paint brass. So let's just. On there, base coat that. This looks really nice. It just breaks up the armor and it just stops it looking foreign and um, and all too much silver on it. So let's let's do this bit down here as well. So let's get some wash applied to the model. Uh, I'm going to use Devlin Mud. Agrax Earth Shade is the, the equivalent in the new paint range. Like I said, all the paints are in the description, so if you're struggling, just have a look. Uh, and we're going to use a wash brush. First place we're going to want to put it is on the pants. So just you want to apply this aiming for the creases. It's best to just get it all over the pants, uh, then you're not going to miss any bits. Nice definition of the, the crevices and the creases. If there's any bubbles in it, don't worry, just brush them out like that. Another place we're going to put this is on this arm here that's meant to be covered in dry blood. So this is going to turn into a really murky brown. That's what we want from it. I 
went to about halfway through painting this model. Um, hasn't took too long. The size of the model is going quite well. Right, so let's highlight the brass sections. Uh, I'm going to use brass scorpion. It's a nice step up from tin bits. I'm going to use uh, a really nice small dry brush. You could probably edge highlight this with a fine detail. Um, but using a dry brush, it just makes it a lot easier for beginners. Um, it is a lazier way of doing it, but it just gives a really quite nice effect. Uh, so let's just highlight this with it. As you can see, you just leave a little bit of the timbers behind and you just like, lightly brush over the areas which you want to be brighter. Just give a nice realistic effect. Um, edge highlight comes to the to look a bit cartoony. Um, this looks a little bit more realistic uh, and it's, it's easier and faster. It is a little bit lazier, but as I said, for beginners, it's ideal. I'm just going to go over all the bits that I've used um, tin bits on. Just give them a bit, a bit of a highlight. Let's layer the pants now. So the wash on the pants is dry, get some blood red and a base coat and brush. And with this paint, um, a little bit of water out of it. So you can get it running nice and smooth. Um, we can just get this on a towel and get it applied. So let's, let's see where we're going. So you want to go for the highest areas, avoiding the recesses. So just layer the paint on. I think it's going to look good. Going for a nice scarlet red, really bright, um, quite bold uh, example. It looks really good on the tabletop using bold colours. Uh, Make sure we stand out. Just lay this over the highest areas. Okay, so we've uh, layered the pants, uh, hopefully you can see that, it's still dry. I've left the recesses dark. Um, now we're going to work on this arm and we're going to make it look like some nice dry blood on there. So for this we're going to use scar bread and we're going to use the same technique of layering, leaving the recesses and just giving it a really nice um, fine coat. Use a bit of water, same as you did with the blood red. And this will make the paint run a lot. Uh, more smooth, a lot nicer. Let's pick out these highest areas, like this one here, just let me see. So you see, um, scarred red is quite a nice colour for dried blood. Um, go back in with a highlight after this is dry. Remember to leave those recesses darker. Okay, so we've left the belt uh, to last, see it around there. We're going to use Rhinox Hide um, or Scorch Brown in the older paints. This is just a base coat. Um, be careful not to hit your red because you know, it's just be a pain having to do it all again. Um, so just be careful to. How do Quite advisable to use a smaller brush than I am, um, just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. This is just going to act as a base coat for um, some lighter browns, and we'll get a nice leathery texture on the belt. 
um, using a range of different brands. So we're going to do a final layering on this uh, dry blood section. We're going to use some red gore and we're going to be even more careful with this one. Um, we're going to try and miss the mid areas and the dark areas. This is going to kind of act as a, a bold highlight. It's not going to be an edge highlight but it's just going to bring out a, a nice kind of um, blood effect because at the minute it looks a bit too brown. Okay, so we're going to come out of this belt now the base coat's dry. I'm going to just use a, a detail brush just so I can get a nice fine highlight. Um, and I'm going to use Bistro Brown. So as you can see, it's quite a nice uh, tone up on the last colour. This is going to be um, just a, a highlight around the edge of the belt. Um, to be quite accurate. You could probably dry brush this in. If you're not too good at doing um, straight highlights, you could, you could be careful and dry brush this on. It'll not have the exact same effect, but it still will look good. Um, let's just get this on. Make it look warm on the edges of the belt, because that's where it's going to take the most damage. Right, this is an optional step. I'm going to go back to the metal armour and I'm going to use a bit of chain mail. I'm going to edge highlight around all the edges with a, with a detail brush. Uh, as I said, this is optional. If you're happy with the armour the way it is, just leave it because um, this is a bit harder to do with the dry brush and, and if done badly, it, it can just ruin the look of the model. So, you've just got to really carefully go around the edges of the armour that you want um, to highlight it. See, that's how easy it is to make a mistake. I'll have to go back and do that again. Um, and we're just going to cover all of this and what this will do is just bring out the edges as, as nice and gleaming and bright. So, so you can see that bit's come out a bit too bold. So that'll have to be um, painted over and the process will have to be started again with that bit. So that's why. Uh, this kind of highlighting um, can be very time consuming. Alright, so I'll give you a little close up of what I've done there. Um, I've edge highlighted the armour with chainmail. I've given the brass parts a little bit of an edge highlight with the brass scorpion. And I've done a little bit of a highlight on the, um, the blood command arm with a bit of blood red. Uh, these are all optional, as I said before. I'll just give you a, a view of what I've been kind of doing with the model um, so hopefully give you a bit of inspiration um, I'll work on the skin now off camera uh, like I said at the beginning of the video if you want to know how to paint the skin uh, we've got a nice video on Oga painting where the skin will show how to paint the skin in great detail um, so just I'll put that in the description and you can check that out and um, I'll just finish this off alright so he has a little 360 degree view of what I've finished completely finished model to look like. Um, the skin is exactly the same as it was done in the other Oga video and the links in the description if you want to know how to paint that. You might already know so this is just what it could look like. Um, it's only took about an hour to paint this so quite a nice amount of time. Um, actually be spending too much time painting your models, painting an hour, spend an hour on each model. So as usual, um, thanks for watching the video, hope you liked it, uh, subscribe to the channel, there's plenty more good stuff on there and um, hope to see you again soon.